Hey guys, it's Libby and I am here today with my September book haul. I told myself that I wasn't going to buy any books in September because my bookshelf is filling up and I already have plenty to read. So of course I ended up with 14. I'm not sure if I'm buying more books since I've been on booktube or if I just notice it more because I do a monthly wrap up, but like every time, every month, I am surprised at the number of books I have acquired. So first, uh, my mom and I took a quick jaunt to New York City, as we sometimes do, and there we stopped at a couple of bookshops, including The Strand, where I got most of these books, but at my first stop, uh, I got This House is Haunted by John Boyne. I found this through a recommendation that Goodreads made to me from one of my other sort of neo-Victorian gothic mysteries. I tend to like those. And this one has a fairly standard plot, but one of the reviews recommended that you don't read this as a straight gothic novel, but you read it as a parody of the gothic novel, and I thought that sounded pretty good. And if that doesn't convince you, let me just read the first sentence to you, because it is excellent. London, 1867. I blame Charles Dickens for the death of my father. How do you not then read that book? The next book that I got was continuing in my Victorian Gothic vein. It is The Quincunx by Charles Palliser. It is a serious brick, and if that's not enough for you, the font is tiny. So this is terrifying to read. Um, but it was 10 bucks, because I got it at a used bookstore. And actually, they had both a paperback and a hardcover. I saw the paperback first, so I grabbed that off the shelf and sort of put it in my pile. And then uh, I found the hardcover, and I that's the one I ended up getting. And I grabbed that one as well. Um, and I had them both sort of sitting in my pile, which my mom was guarding uh, while I wandered around the shop. And uh, we ended up not having to put the paperback back on the shelves because my mom bought that one. So maybe I will buddy read this with my mom. It did only take us six months. And then we hit up The Strand, which is a mix of new and used books, and it's like massive. Most used bookstores have a fairly limited selection, um, but The Strand is like basically a Barnes & Noble, but cheap. And we had rather a full schedule that day, so I only had about 20 minutes to race through it. And I was considering finding my mom and telling her, you know what, let's just forget what we were going to do next. I'd rather spend more time at the Strand finding books. And then I realized that I could spend really an impressive amount of money there and that it was probably good that I had to leave. So the books that I got first and most deliciously is The End by Lemony Snicket. This is the last book of the series of unfortunate events and I am slowly cobbling together my collection of these because I originally read them in ebook format but they are so lovely I wanted to have them in physical format. I also got some more middle grade, the first two books of Catherine M. Valente's uh, Fairyland series. Uh, the Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making, and The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland and Led the Rebels There. I haven't actually read any Catherine Valente yet, but I'm sort of gradually accumulating her books. I also have The Orphan Tales and... Oh no, I don't have Deathless. I just want to have Deathless. Because I feel like I'm really gonna like her, and on the one hand I kind of want to wanna hold off so that A, uh, I in case I do get disappointed, I have this sort of magical fantasy land that I can live in until then, and B, so that uh, I will have as many books of hers as possible when I go on the inevitable binge. But I probably should start to read these. <laughs> I also got Sailing to Serantium by Guy Gabriel Kay. He has sort of invented his own subset of the either fantasy or historical fiction genre. His books are usually classified as fantasy because they take place in lands that have never existed in our timeline, but there isn't any like magic or dragons or time travel or that sort of thing. And the worlds he creates in his different books are very similar to worlds in our timeline. So um, Sailing to Serantium and its sequel uh, Lord of Emperors, I think? Yeah, Lord of Emperors, which are part of the um, Serentine Mosaic duology, take place in a sort of Byzantine Empire analog. He also has a book that takes place in like medieval France and I believe Spain during the Holy Wars and um, ancient China. 
So I picked this one because I uh, particularly like Byzantine art and I did major in classical studies in college so I know a lot about the uh, immediately pre-Byzantine situation so maybe I will learn a little bit more about the mid-during inter-Byzantine situation. And then also I got The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton, which as you can see is a signed edition. It's not, you know, signed to me. She just signed it randomly. There's her name. This is set in 17th century Amsterdam, a place that I have visited in the novel um, Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister and enjoyed. It's about a young lady named Nella who, after her father dies, gets married to an older man and goes and lives in his house and he has an annoying sister, uh, but he gets her a lovely uh, miniature of the house that they live in uh, with like little figurines of all the people and all the stuff and then weird creepiness happens, I believe. So those are my New York purchases. I then came home to Virginia and uh, made some more. Although they don't actually count because they were free. My local used bookstore accepts books and then gives you store credit and my family has donated so many books to them over the years that we now like have more store credit than we would possibly ever use. I think we're at $48 right now and the books are like $6 each and we are regularly renewing our store credit. So I got two more books in the series of unfortunate events. They are number four, The Miserable Mill, and number six, The Erzatz Elevator, which means the only one I'm still missing is number eight, which is, I think, The Hostile Hospital. So if anyone knows of a cheap hostile hospital somewhere, I also got The Drowning Tree by Carol Goodman. This is mainly a mystery, but there's a sort of feel of modern gothic about it. It's set in the Hudson River Valley of New York, which is actually where my mom grew up, um, and I have been there, and it is very atmospheric. That's also where um, Sleepy Hollow is located. This is about a woman named Juno, who is a art historian, I believe, and um, she's restoring a stained glass window in her old college chapel. Um, and her friend is also studying this stained glass window and everyone thought that it portrayed one thing but she presents this theory that it's actually portraying something else and then the friend ends up dead. What? And so Juno has to pull together all of the threads of mysteries past and present to figure out what's going on. I also got the three companion books to the Harry Potter series, uh, which I have read two of. I actually have never read Tales of Beetle the Bard. So I have that and also Quidditch Through the Ages and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them in quite nice hardcover editions, actually. Um, so I'm planning, once I'm done with the Discworld series reread, so like five years from now, uh, to do a Harry Potter reread and I would like to read these along with it. And then the last book I got, I got in the old-fashioned way of just driving to Barnes & Noble and buying a book, uh, and that is Soulless by Gail Carriger. Carriger. Meh. The first book in the Parasol Protectorate novel. Um, I got this because I am going to Yolfest and Gail is going to be there, so I thought I should have read some of her books. More on Yolfest will be forthcoming, but for now, uh, have a lovely day and I will see you in a new video soon.